Right. <coughs> Just go as normal now. Let's go clap hands, isn't it? Look at the sinker. I'm professional, see? Hey guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Ace Podcast Nation, the home of Rodri Gigs on football. And uh, we've got a special uh, in-studio show today. But uh, of course, you can get all our podcasts at the usual place. Audio versions of the Sports Social Podcast Network, the UK's first uh, audio sports podcast network. And of course, youtube.com slash Ace Podcast Nation for the video versions of uh, this show and all the other shows that we do. And uh, I'm delighted to uh, be joined yet again in person for the first time as well by uh, former Salford City winger, Mr. Rodri Giggs. How are you, mate? Shouldn't, shouldn't, yeah, good. shouldn't it be me getting lost in your time? I know, isn't it? That's it. That's it. You live in Manchester and you knew exactly where to go and I was parked up in the, n the next street along going... Yeah, like I was saying... Where are we? Me, me auntie still lives there. She's lived there for 40 years. We used to go to carnivals and all kinds of stuff back in the 80s around there. So I know it well. I want to start which fresh in the mind, which is uh, the World Cup playoffs are all confirmed, decided, and uh, Wales and Scotland both seeded. That's it's big, isn't it? We talked about on a on a recent show like uh, that it would have been big for Scotland to get it as a seeded team for Hampden Park, and I think it's just as big for Wales as well. But um, yeah, the, all the seeds are set, mate. It, it does make a difference. I didn't think it, it, it made a difference, but, but when you look at the seedings now and you see the teams, yeah, there's... Um, Some big there's boys. A, there's, there's, yeah, there's Italy, possibly Portugal, uh, Sweden, they'll push over. And there's a couple of them there, so, but yeah, they're, they're all still tough games. But, you know, at home, I, I, you know, when we talked about it a couple of days ago, I changed my mind. I think it'd be better at Cardiff City's ground. It was rocking, rocking last night. And I think um, the thing is, like I looked at all those teams and I'd say maybe North Macedonia is the one where I'd be sort of pretty happy with the well, rest of them. But even then, they've got a couple of players from around well, Europe. Well, I'm with Turkey as well. We'll have to, you know, we'll just... After the Euros, they yeah, were terrible uh, in the Euros. They might have you know, an eye on revenge, so you, you don't know that it's going to work out. But... Any game in that in that group now that you, at hard, home it? you'd fancy, but how does it work when you beat them? Who do you want to then? So there's four groups of semi-finals. So the group one plays the winner of group two, basically. So whoever comes out the out the first and three two and four, play the, right, yeah, okay. play the next two, and then three plays four. So like, so you could still end up playing Italy or Portugal in it? the final, yeah. yeah. But semi-final, I suppose you're just trying to avoid them, and you but like. The other thing as well is you could end up with a Wales Scotland final, which would be and for um, Is that the, 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 the highest seed? Uh? Yeah, I can't remember. I think it was a. I think it's the it's the. It's, yeah, I think it's the seeded teams get the final. I'm not 100 percent sure though. I'll have to double check on that. But um, like this, the, all the games are hard. But like from a Wales point of view, I thought um, against Belgium they were outstanding, about as good as I can remember them playing since 2016. And you'd fancy them to probably beat anyone on a day, like if they could play like that. And they did, they did that without Gareth Bale, which I think is really encouraging because well, they've done that before this this year, haven't they? So that's what they've probably been working hard on the scene and. Behind the scenes too, if you know big players do miss out, then you know it doesn't then uh, make a difference. And we've seen it before because it happened a few, three or four games ago where he, he wasn't able to play, but we still got a good result. So yeah, it's good. We, we need all the players. Yeah, you want him fit, do Really, especially when it comes to the crunch now. But you know you, they know that they can do it without him. It's key for more. Because he, he got booked late on, I think, didn't he? Is he banned from the semi-final? No, there's only one banned, isn't there? Is it Morel? Yeah. No, I knew he was. I wasn't sure if Kiefer Moore was because I was driving. No, uh, I don't think on. he is. I think it's Morel. That's good because I think he's been massive for Wales over the last couple of years because he just gives them 
a target for the other players to work around, like your Ramseys and like Ramsey's still working his way back to fitness, but hopefully by the time this comes around in March, hopefully he'll be sort of fully some fit. Some and of these teams don't know how to deal with him because he's big and powerful and good in the air. That's and they're not amazing. used to it where they're, where they're playing week in, week out. So he, he does make a difference and he's got an eye for a goal. So he, he done, Some players do better for their international than they do for their clubs. And he, he seems to be doing... He does well for Cardiff, but he's doing really well at international level. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't even he hasn't really played a lot of games for Cardiff this year because when Mick McCarthy was manager, he was on the bench a lot of the time. And I just think um, he just, like you say, he offers something different and defenders are not used to it. The problem being the international referees see him jumping and they just yell card. He you feels like he gets careful, booked all the time. You know, with his arms and you've just got to be careful. He does get... Had I, I feel like it's a bit hard done by sometimes. Like it? Andy Carroll, he's big and just has a good leap, and, and sometimes you know when you're hanging in there, I know from heading the ball, it's like to hang, and if you're hanging, your elbows are out there. So it, you, yeah, you, you can't hang if you haven't got your arms out. Can you? No, you just go up and then straight back down. These, these foreign referees, they can't get the cars out quick enough, so you just got to be know. careful. But you did a really good job yesterday. What about really well. all of them played well? I thought it was the best. Um, Best performance by a Welsh team since 2016. I honestly did. I thought the because one thing we didn't do in the Euros, and we talked about it in the Euro shows a lot, is I almost felt like Wales were a little bit disappointed in some ways in the performances. Like the results were all right because I felt like they didn't do what what had done they'd done so well doing in Euro 2016, which was really pressing teams, putting them under pressure, rushing them. And I didn't feel like we did that in the last Euros. Whereas last night, they just didn't give Belgium any time whatsoever. And I just feel like if we've got a fully fit squad, I'm not too frightened of any of those teams. Wouldn't particularly want to play Italy. But even Portugal, I think, they rely so heavily on Ronaldo and Fernandes. You say, of course, you they've say, got you say that, they've many got, players. Got, but. You know, Cancelo, Bernardo Silva, they've got many, many other players. You just want to stay well away from Portugal. Yeah, bit of revenge. Because they're big game players. That's and, it, yeah. And that, that would what would be a struggle. Yes, we got a chance, but you don't. One-off game, innit? Yeah, you don't want to play, especially the, you know, Northern Ireland had a good result against Italy. But if that was a, a crunch game, Italy yeah. would win that. Didn't matter, did it for Italy it, at all? When it comes to the crunch, these big teams, they turn up. So you want to stay well clear of them too. Yeah, and the thing is, like Ronaldo, this is his last. Uh, this is his last go in a, He ain't playing in a, in, in another major tournament. So I think World Cup. He may play in the twenty-two Euros. Oh yeah, because they're so quick, isn't it? Jesus. So, but yeah, World Cup. You wouldn't put it against him, would you? No. Four years. How old do you be? Be forty-one, wouldn't he? Jesus. Then, how old did Ryan play? Do we say the other day till oh, thirty-nine? 38 yeah, or 39? He's in his 40s. He's in his 40s. Still in the first team for United in yeah. the first 40s. Yeah. So then... Like a squat. Yeah. Would you say, and you'd say like Ronaldo's in as good, if not yeah, better, he's, he's, condition? He's, yeah, he's fit. But he, Ryan changed his game to slow down to because it's hamstrings. Ronaldo's not slowed down. Really. Well, he has a little he's bit. He's changed he's his still, position, hasn't he? He's still it? quick. He just doesn't do it often enough. He does it in spurts mm. and just hangs about in certain areas. Yeah, he's maybe. changed his game as well, but he's still like a f physical specimen. Isn't he? Oh, yeah. I, I, I take it back. If Ronaldo's still playing when he's 45, I wouldn't be surprised. Just because well, he, he haven't got an ounce of body fat on him. He, if someone said to you yeah, that someone's going to be 43 and they're going to win the Super Bowl, you'd tell him he's off the reds. Yeah. Like Tom Brady, you know, American football, he's 43, 44, he's the same age. He's 44. And you're still going. So these days, if you look after yourself, well, it's a bit different. You reckon Football you could run around for ninety minutes, but you know, if you, if you look after yourself, it doesn't mm. drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't eat sugars, doesn't salt, all like. So yes, he could. But he's like one of those. He's one of them, and it he, he wouldn't surprise you no, if he no, if he was no. the one who just kept going and going and going. Yeah, not at all. Do you reckon you could play uh, American football at your age now? Yeah. Take the hits? Yeah. No, um, quarterback, they don't really take hits, do they? 
they've got them shoulder pads, they've got the, the, the helmets on, and they're pretty protected these days, these quarterbacks. I'm big into the NFL. I know, that's why I said. 10, 15 years, you can't touch them when the flags are out, so... Yeah, the, so you can get away with it. Probably 20 years ago, you wouldn't be used playing. to get nailed to the quarterbacks back yeah. then. I remember but now the if you tackle them, even if you land on top of them when you tackle them, flag 15. So they're really protected. So, no, so that's probably one of the reasons why he can play the way the way he does. But still, still a yeah. professional winning, sport of that winning, age, winning, isn't it? Yeah, and it is a league game. That it's, there's a lot of fast and yeah, that. athletic, big. I mean, big. Yeah, like big, big, big foot, guys. 350 pounds big. Yeah, don't want to get nailed by one of them, no. do you? Yeah. What about Scotland? What do you see their chances as? Like, obviously, they're a bit like Wales in that they haven't got the deepest squad, but they also haven't got a, a Gareth Bale or, or a Ramsey necessarily in their the, team. These teams, they can go as far as they want as long as they've got a good core and a, and a good team spirit. You, you don't really like this. I think that's what Scotland and, and Ireland and, and Wales lost many years ago. And, and now they see Wales seem to have like got a good team spirit, a good togetherness, a good coach, uh, and you know good young players coming through that you've blooded. And you've got to give time, and now you're reaping the rewards uh, of that in, in these big competitions. One thing they have got is they've got a really good coach, really experienced coach uh, in Steve Clark. I've been massively impressed with him since he's taken over the Scotland job because when he took them over, they weren't doing very well. Um, they were struggling. They, they weren't even looking like they were going to qualify whatsoever. So, you know, he got them to the Euros. Yes, they probably should have done a bit better in the Euros, really. Um, I think it, going off my memory, which we know, both know is not great, um, I think it was the one, the last game they played, or it might have been one of the latter games they played, was pretty good. But apart from that, they just didn't quite get going because they they the first game they played and I think it was the first two they they didn't play to their strengths in that putting like a, similar to what I was saying about Wales didn't put the other team under pressure and and kind of play with that team spirit and that play to your strengths you know you've got Robertson on the in in the fullback position and uh, I just think no one will fancy going to Hampden Park to try and get a result. No. No, that be uh, won't be easy, at, but they're in the same boat as us. They're in the, the seeded group, so hopefully they get a kind draw as well. So, if I give you the list of teams now, like who would you want from the? I'm not bothered. I've, I've watched the this morning. It was like North Macedonia. Was it Turkey? Yeah. So seeded is Portugal, Czech Scotland. Republic. Right. Yeah. So you got North Macedonia, Russia. I oh, know Russia Czech is. Czech Republic, even though they're in our group. Yeah, so we could play Czech Republic, we could play Ukraine, Turkey, Austria, North Macedonia, and Poland. Yeah, probably Austria and Poland, yeah, probably the most, probably the strongest there in that group. But even so, Lewin, like, like Lewandowski, yeah, I was going to say. Decent, and then obviously the Czechs. It's difficult, isn't it? Because even. Like, and Austria, Austria, no bugs either. Every single one of those teams, they've all got. Premier League players, they've all got Champions League players, they've all got good players. Even North Macedonia have got a couple of Champions League players. So there, there's no easy game. But obviously, if you're given the choice, there's certain teams you want to avoid. It's natural. It's just yeah, the way like it is, say, isn't it? You'd, you'd fancy any of them <coughs> at all. Mm. Yeah, 100%. They, um, and I guess the natural thing moving on then is the we got the World Cup in Qatar. So one of... Um, one of our listeners, viewers, on uh, the show last week suggested we talk about the the kind of impact that the Qatar World Cup and the fixtures are going to have on the players, the clubs, the tournaments. It's going to be uh, a weird and wild because it's like what we know when coming to the end of November now. This time next year, we're going to be gearing up for a World Cup. Like we're going to be two weeks away from a World Cup. Mm. It's um, it's going to be really strange having a World Cup just before Christmas. The Champions League, the Premier League, the Championship, it's all going to be just getting into full flow. And we're so used to that Christmas period in this well, country as well. Well, I think the Champions League usually stops now until January, doesn't it? So 
but it's going to be weird because the league's going to start for start early. I don't know how they're going to do that. The fixtures to to squeeze them in. So it's just going to be weird all around. But it's going to be football. Lots to talk about. But you've got a feel for the players as well. I was watching a documentary this morning on a rugby league player, twenty year eight year old Leeds, who's got retired because of concussion. So you got to have, you know look after player welfare because you know playing all year round World Cup and then the the next year in that same season at the end of the season they've got Euros so they would have just played a full year of non-stop football and when you think of from when they came back from the Covid break where they stopped everything since they've come back they haven't at this point as we record this they haven't had a break then they're going to play to the end of this season probably had like two weeks yes Three weeks max, but you've, you've got to have more than that when you when you put your body through stress. It's going through, especially these days. So, and they're only going to get probably that in the summer as well, isn't it? Two or three weeks because the injuries and all kinds of pulled muscles and so. Well, the one thing which I was thinking about um, earlier on was what you've seen in the cricket since COVID is because they're all in these bubbles all year round, constantly in hotel rooms and oh, not allowed out. <laughs> well, that's what they've been like. You know, it's, that's been a wild couple of uh, days listening to him talk about that. But, um, yeah, it's like those, all those players have had to... There's been numerous ones who've dropped out because they're const they've been constantly on tour around the world and that, playing cricket, playing different tours, uh, to the point where they've ended up having to have completely different players for each format of the game. And I think when you think with football, they're just going to be, it's non-stop now. So from the summer, they're going to have a couple of weeks off. They're probably going to start early because of they're going to have to condense as many games as possible in before the World Cup to make sure that they've got enough space after the World Cup, before cricket, the Euros. There's so many formats now and they just have, I think it's more mental cricket because there's so much time of travelling or just... Yeah. So, but it's still... Mentally, it's still draining, and yeah, it's just it's not going to be easy. It's definitely not going to be easy. And like, if you're say, so you're a United fan, say United next year, next season, get off to an absolute <coughs> flyer, undefeated, come the end of November, start of December, and like you're flying, you haven't lost a game, you've won pretty much all of them. The last thing you want to do is have a break for four weeks or whatever, five weeks over Christmas and have a World Cup because you want to get as many points on the board as possible, don't you? It will, but you know, they, they know it's coming. You know, Most of these players now can't wait to play in the World Cup because they've got their own brands and, and whatnot. So, but yes, it's going to be weird. It's going to be totally weird. Um, but you can pull it, look at it on the other side, they might have a, a, a shocker and need to have a little break, like they're having now. And I'm a good four or five week hyenas might, might do them well. Yeah. So hopefully we're not in that stage back this time next year, we've gone through that. But it could be any, any team that, that have, it could work either way. Yeah, it's true. I think um, the other thing as well is obviously the impact the heat's going to have out there, I think. I don't think people realise how hot it is there, even in the winter, and even at that time of year. It's like as hot as it is here in the well, hottest in days. November, they'll be more used to it, like Spain, when it's hot, hot. So, but still, playing football in it is just ridiculous. Well, what's the What's the time difference like for? Yeah, it's two or three hours. So it's not too it's bad, not like too bad, no. not two like middle hours, of the day. Two or three hours in front, yeah. No, it's not too it's bad, not is it? too bad. Maybe four. But no, it won't be too bad. But, yeah, because it's November, it's still... Having it in November is just... Someone's palm got greased there. Big of course it did. Thing. But, that, yeah, well, this is the thing, isn't it? When they when they, uh, th when they they decided the World Cup was going there, it all, it all seemed as if it was going to England for the World Cup. That was the, the rumours, everything was in place. And then all of a sudden they announced Qatar as the... England's envelope. Yeah, Qatar it's just like that. It's just like massive. But, and then and since then, Seb Blatter and Michelle Platini getting done for corruption. So, you know, probably tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Allegedly. But um, the other... 
I just wonder because they couldn't have played it in the in the summer out there, could they? they like you could just no. couldn't. No. no matter what time of day or no. night it was. For fans as well though, outside walking about in it, you know, there's a few that's gonna go down. Especially when you're drinking and you're not dehydrate hydrating like you're supposed to. It's different kind of sun over there. It's you're in the desert, it's forty, fifty degrees. Yeah, you can't go on a like a lads football all day, can you? Know? I've been to Vegas and you literally can't spend fifteen minutes in it. It's like someone's like out of an air dry on your face. It's that bad. We had to cut in through the casinos and walk through the casinos, and the casinos are that big. It takes you 15 minutes to walk through, and they're all air con. As soon as you get out, it just feels like someone's like that in your face with an air dryer. It's, it's minging, it's horrible. And this was in July, so it was right in the heat of it. And it's, it just, 15 minutes, you could, but that's it. And they, put, they want them to play football, it's just it's never going to happen. Yeah, no, I don't think uh, that... They kill people. Yeah, well... Do, people have died from it. Enough people have died building the stadiums. I think yeah, we don't need to add footballers and fans to it, do you? Just playing football, is, actual fans would die from it. It's just too hot. Yeah, yeah. I um, I got to say, I'm not looking forward to it at the moment. I'm sure when it comes I mean, around... I'm, I'm more intrigued to see how, how it goes, how it, yeah, it's going to be so strange. They've got money. They must be saying air con, air conditioned stadiums. How does that work? Yeah, I, there's only it's blowing cold air just. Yeah, but it, like on the pitch. The way it. the way a stadium's built and set, the fans at the bottom or closest to the pitch, they're not going to get benefit from it's just, you know, it's air conditioned you stadiums, know, are they? People who are watching this, if you stayed in a hotel and you put the air conditioning overnight and you wake up, you're like, yeah. So is it, will it have that effect on people just playing football with air conditioning blown in your face? You just get um, loads of like colds and sore throats and all that sort of stuff because it's just recycled air, isn't it? Like on an airplane and yeah, stuff. And then, yeah, then after that, it's boiling out. You, yeah, it's going to be weird. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a lot of adaptions yeah. for football clubs, football players, we'll teams, be fans. On that now, the plans will be going ahead where. You know, where they're training and where and whatnot, probably indoor training, air con training. You'd think so, wouldn't you? They'll have loads of them out there. Yeah, you'd have to, wouldn't you? You couldn't... Because um... we have them here as well. United have got one, City have got a plat lane. They're just like um, 10 v 10, big pitches, but the air con... Yeah, a lot, I know a, lot, a few places, a few clubs have got them up. underground, haven't they? Yeah. Like underneath the pitches. Yeah, but pretty sure they can, they can put these kind of tents up. Oh, like the massive, dome they had by the yeah. Cardiff City Stadium yeah. before? Yeah. Just throw them up, don't they? Yeah. They're nice and uh, ventilated then yeah. as well. That's so. exactly, what, exactly what they'll be like. Yeah, they'll have them everywhere then, I would imagine. Yeah, because they're easy to put up as well. If I asked you now, who's going to win the World Cup? Who's it going to be? So I've got this before. You. England have got a show. France. You know, Holland, Dark Horses. And then you've got the usual suspects, Brazil, Argentina, who else? Um, Could be Messi's last World Cup. Messi's last World Cup, yeah, so... The no one... one really that stands out, but no. England have, have got to a semi-final the final in the last competition, so they're trending in the right direction and, and they've got a good young team, so... They've got so much depth, don't they? So yeah, I think exactly. that's the one thing. Probably They've depth, got over yeah. everyone, not just the British teams. I think yeah. everyone... Um, and the other thing then is with Messi, I just think the one thing that's always thrown at him when you have the, the Messi-Ronaldo conversation is, oh, he's never done it in the same amount of countries as he has, and he's never done it at international level. And I know they, they won the, um, oh, it's called the Copa de America or whatever recently, but I don't think that's the same as winning the World Cup, is it? It's not like no, on the same it's, it's level. Just, but then it's more the, the same as the Euros. Euros, isn't it? Isn't it? But we don't see it as that over here for yeah. some reason. Yeah, I think it's because it's probably just because it's the other side of the world, isn't it? But you're right. It's the it's it's basically the equivalent. The Euros, yeah. So same as the African nations as the. So you can you can't really label that on him anymore because he, he has done it, but you know, the world stage is where the greats do it. And he's a great, so... You know. It would be nice to see him and Ronaldo go out with a bang if this was their last 
What, you mean Argentina Portugal final? Well, the semi final because Wales, final. Wales will obviously Quarter get to final, the final. final. But um, no, it'd be nice. It would be nice to like literally see them on either side of the draw, kind of both scoring as they're going along until they meet each other and yeah. kind of go toe to toe one last time. But you, you just never know. Portugal got to get there first, obviously. Um, it's one of them, isn't it? I um, I fancy Holland. I thought they were a bit unlucky in the Euros. Um, the way they went out and stuff, and I just um, I like quite a few of their players. You can't sleep on France either, and obviously Italy if they get through, because I don't know why that they're in the position that they're in now. Mm. They've obviously sort of out the ball because to to win a Euros and then to not qualify to the next World Cup is pretty dour. Was Co Conti was he manager of Italy in the Euros, which we covered, or was it someone else? No, it was Mancini. Mancini was there, yeah. wasn't he, in there? Yeah, and I think, um, I wonder whether they just had a bit of a hangover from the from the Euros. And this is the problem in some ways, that everything's so condensed and everything's so close together. Teams don't get a chance to recover from the uh, mental side of it as well. With all this pandemic on, have they always had a full team? Injuries, COVID, that plays it. And then at the end of the last two or three games, they have to win them. And then you go to Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland get a result against them. I know it was a draw, but Italy needs to win.